Hi, here's the question. Can I share a few things about the history of the violoncello da Spalla and why did this instrument disappear and why did it take so long for this instrument to come back? Well, this is a vast question, very interesting question, and we can talk about this for days. You can write a PhD on this subject. So let's make it sweet and short. Here's the history of violoncello, very brief history. Violoncello is an Italian instrument that was born in the early 17th century in Italy, probably in the region of Bologna. And it is a very unique instrument of the violin family because there were two very distinct periods in the history of this instrument. When this instrument was introduced, there were still no metal wound strings. It might sound a little bit advanced if you are not into music, all musicians know that this, but let me explain. In order for a string to vibrate freely and have all this rich and sonorous sound, string makers already in the 17th century discovered that they need to put metal wire around the gut core. So the strings were made from gut and in order to make them more sonorous, they discovered that they need to put some metal wire around. Well, it took centuries upon centuries to discover this. So when violoncello was uh, first introduced in Italy, there was still no technology and no knowledge about metal wound strings, which is why the early cello was a very large instrument, potentially larger than the modern day cello. So what happens next is very, very interesting. When the metal wound strings were invented and introduced in the music industry in the second half of the 17th century, probably in the region of Bologna, this was a revolution. Not only instrument makers were able to reduce the size of this giant violoncello, now the violoncello was much smaller and much easier to play, uh, the invention of metal wound strings also gave birth to this tiny instrument, which we call today violoncello da Spalla, but at the time they call it simply violoncello, because it depends on how much wire you put on the string, you could make the instrument bigger or smaller, and this is why violoncello in the 17th century existed in a giant variety of sizes, and you can still find dozens of surviving violoncellos of all kinds of sizes from the 17th and 18th centuries. And this is very important to know, speaking about the history of violoncello. So violoncello is an Italian instrument that originally was made very large. After the introduction of metal wound strings, it was made much smaller. So this is what is really important to realize. And in that respect, it is very different from the history of viola or the history of violin. Those instruments were also not standardized. But the gap between different sizes was very much larger with the violoncello, which is why violin and viola players could easily pick a smaller violoncello and played the spalla using their existing technique. So here's the second part of the question. Why did it take so long for this instrument to come back? Let me answer this question. It took so long for this instrument to come back because earlier musicology simply dismissed all those descriptions from historical treatises, simply dismissed all of the iconographical evidence where you can actually see violoncellists playing this very large instrument held against their shoulder, they simply dismiss this because they somehow assumed that if an instrument doesn't look like the modern day cello, therefore it is not a cello. This is due to misinterpretation of historical sources. Another reason is uh, the lost playing technique. So today, violinists know so well that you can play the violin using a variety of techniques. Especially Baroque violinists are incredibly good at this. They can play the violin with the chin support, without the chin support, holding the violin above the collarbone or below the collarbone. These people have acquired enormously flexible technique. So when there were earlier attempts to revive the violoncello da Spalla, by the way, they call it normally viola pomposa, where one of the obstacles was that players somehow assumed that the only way to play this instrument, and let me put it in the words of uh, Fétis and Closson, those two luminaries, 
of musicology in Belgium who tried to bring this instrument back, they assumed that this instrument cannot be held naturally. Another issue is that there were no strings. And earlier attempts somehow uh, focused on using existing strings for the normal cello or for normal viola or for even other instruments such as guitars or harps. And the truth is this instrument cannot sound with any other strings but strings made specifically for this instrument. So when Fittis and Glosson in the early 20th century tried to bring this instrument back to life, they didn't have strings. As a result, they made a conclusion that the historical sources must have been wrong. And this instrument simply cannot be tuned as historical sources suggest. Well, today we all know very well that this is absolutely not the case. So I hope this reveals a little bit of the history of violoncello. I hope this explains why it took so long time for this instrument to come back. I'm Dimitri, I'm the author of the book on the Spala, how violinists can find their unique voice and open new career opportunities in 14 days. You can find this book on Amazon worldwide. You can also find this book on the book's website. And if you are multi-instrumentalist, if you are a violin and viola player, or maybe you are violin or viola player, but you are potentially open-minded to uh, the benefits of becoming multi-instrumentalist, then you can grab an abridged digital copy of this book completely for free on the book's website. I will leave a couple of links in the description of this video. If you have any questions, I'm here to help. Simply comment below or reach out with a private message. And if you liked this video, if you've learned something new in this video, you are very warmly welcome to uh, like, share this video and subscribe to my channel wherever you happen to follow me, be it on YouTube, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on my personal blog, on Instagram or wherever else. I wish you massive success and I look forward to sharing more value with you in the next video.